Adventures in Time and Space, transcribed in future tense. Dimension X. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of astounding science fiction, bring you Dimension X. The civilization of the galaxy spread across 200 million worlds. The black void of space swarmed with the ships of the Empire. But far off the trade routes, almost forgotten, lay the dying planet Earth. A backwater in galactic culture, a place of exile, a pebble in the sky. I landed on Earth, on the one spot which I would have called civilized a patch along the desolate heights of the Himalayas that surrounded the palace of the imperial governor of Earth. Hmm. Dr. Bell Averdan of Sirius Sector. That's a familiar name. Perhaps you've seen it in the Galactic Archaeological Journal, my Lord Ennis. Me? No, no, I'm a soldier, not a scientist. It was a newspaper article. You gave an interview about your expedition to Earth. I suppose you want to start digging. Whatever can you find on this miserable heap of rubble? I don't consider Earth a miserable heap, my lord. It's absolutely unique in the galaxy. Unique? It's the only inhabited planet that is radioactive. It's a pig pen. Yes, I know. But this planet is inhabited. Biologists have proven that on a radioactive world, high forms of life cannot develop. High forms? <laughs> The rest of the galaxy hates the Earthmen, and they return it with interest. I don't think you understand. I'm not intolerant of anyone, and that even includes Earthmen. My theory is that life on Earth originated before it was radioactive. Ah, there's a story like that in the Earth lore of the ancients. I know, I've read it. Oh? I wouldn't admit that here if I were you, Dr. Everdan. It's forbidden for outsiders to read it. The Earthmen get pretty violent about their religion. Do you mean the imperial police power here is defective? It is, in case of sacrilege. Well, now, what do you actually want to prove? That man originated in prehistoric times on Earth before space travel and spread to the other planets. What? <laughs> Are you seriously suggesting that at one time Earth was the only inhabited planet and that man descended from uh, Earth man? There's a chance it might be so. You'll change your mind when you see them, Doctor. I'm not an anti-terrestrial, but as far as I can see, they're lazy and ignorant and generally inferior to us. I'm as liberal as the next man, but it's a fact. Once an Earth man, always an Earth man. <laughs> I booked passage to the city of Chica on an earth line. My fellow passengers seemed ordinary enough. But I was conscious of being alone among earthmen. I beg your pardon. Uh, could you tell me what's going on there? Uh, sure. You see that couple? They've been married 40 years. It's their anniversary. Yes, sir. 40 years. Hey, Mother? Uh, it seems like yesterday. Just like yesterday. Hey, when are you folks scheduled for the 60? In a month. 16th of November. Well, I hope you have a nice day for it. My father reached his 60 in a pouring rain. Kept complaining we were getting soaked. So I told him, what are you complaining about, Dad? I've got to come back. <laughs> now, this, uh, now, this 60 they're talking about, are they referring to their 60th birthday? Sure. That's when they put you away. Euthanasia. It's a custom. Can't have people living on. Eats up all the food. That's right, isn't it, Pop? Yes, sir. Mother's coming with me when I reach the 60. Uh, she's not due for a couple of months, but she thinks we might as well go together. Yeah, that's the spirit. There's many a man living past the 60. Sneaks, stealing the food from the next generation. A guy should go when it's his time. Yes, but suppose It's he's... only fair to... Hey, where are you from? 
I beg your pardon? Asking all them questions. Yes. Who are you? A spy? Where are you from? I'm Bel Abaddon from Barone. Serious sector. Oh, an outsider, huh? Come on, we we'll go forward. Did you hear that, Mother? An outsider. I burned with indignation. Earthmen treating me like an outcast. Earthmen. When we landed, I followed my intention of observing the human animal, subspecies Earth, in its native habitat. In this case, a large department store. Perhaps I resembled a floor walker for a young earth girl came up to me and asked a question. Pardon me, but it is my father. He's about 5'4". He wears eye lenses. I think he had on a brown coat. I'm afraid I don't remember seeing anyone. But they followed me here. I've got to find him. Are you in trouble, miss? Oh, no. Uh, no, it's nothing, really. I, I'm sorry I bothered you. Attention. Attention, please. What's that? All patrons of the store will kindly leave by the 5th Street exit. This store is being evacuated for radiation fever oh, quarantine. Oh, oh, oh. What's all this about? They're after me. It is really radiation fever at all. Who's after you? How am I going to get out of here? There'll be checking registration cards at the door. Haven't you got one? Yes, but it has my name on it. I, I don't know what to do. Come on. But you don't even know me. I don't know anybody here. But you're an interesting species. Person. This way. Show your own car. Oh. Come on. Step along. Step along. Step along. Step along. Next. Check. Wait a minute. Pull the check. Yes, sir. Stand right there. Look here, officer. Are you with her? Yes, but you'd better find out who I am. Later. Stand over there. Next. Come on. What is it now? The Imperium. Are you afraid of them? Of course. Don't worry about the outsiders, Miss Sheck. I'll handle them. Oh, no, don't try anything. Don't talk to them at all. Just do what they say. Don't even look at them. We'll see. Here they are. All right, now. You, God. Yes, sir? I'm Lieutenant Cloudy, Imperial Garrison. Who's got the fever? If it please your honor. Not so close, idiot. You might be infected. I'll take over. You, Worthy. What's your name? Speak up, squaw. Paula Schechter. Your registration papers? Here you are, sir. Thank you. All right, now. Pick them up. Go on. Say, look here now. What did you say, Earthy? If you please, sir. This man has nothing to do with me. I never saw him before. What did you say? I don't like the way you treat women. And I'd advise you to improve your manners. And where have you been brought up, Earthy? Here's lesson number one. <coughs> Are you... My arm... Let's go. No, you... Sergeant, neuronic whip. Oh, no, no. Yes, sir. Uh. Oh. oh, you're all right now. What happened? They gave you full power and the neuronic whip. Where are we? The military base. Oh, you should. Is that? Oh. Well, Dr. Avadar, we seem to have had an unpleasant contretemps in this city this afternoon. Unpleasant? I should put it stronger, Colonel. As a free citizen of the Empire, I had every right to resent such illegal treatment. <clears throat> I consider the whole incident unfortunate, Doctor. Don't you think it would be best to forget the whole matter? I think not. I have an appointment in a week with a procurator. Pro procurator, huh? What do you intend doing with Miss Schecht? Uh, what would you suggest, sir? I had... Uh... Free her immediately. And offer her your apologies. Of course. If the young lady will accept my sincere regrets, I will give the order for your release immediately. <laughs> understand. They just turned us loose. Of course. You must be very important. I never heard of the outsiders being that polite to an Earthman before. I'm not an Earthman, Paula. What? I'm an archaeologist from the outside. Oh. 
Well, then you stood up to the soldiers because you knew it was safe all along. And I thought... Oh, I should have known. Hold on. Does my not being an Earthman make me any different from five minutes ago? You might have told me, sir. If you don't mind, don't call me, sir. Don't be like the rest of them. Like the rest of whom, sir? The rest of the disgusting animals that live on Earth? Please, Paula. If you'll excuse me, sir, I must leave. Oh, wait. Paula. Listen to me, Paula. I had access to the garrison files, and to satisfy idle curiosity, I indexed Pola Schecht. Her father was a Dr. Mikhail Schecht, biologist. And against his name was a black star with a notation, condemned in absentia, charge, evading the 60. That was why she was afraid. So I sent a note asking her to meet me in the North Park after dark. Over here. Dr. Haverdam? Sit down. Oh, I, I want you to understand. I wouldn't have come except... I understand. I've seen your father's record. You know about it. I looked into it, Paula. There doesn't seem to be much that can be done about the 60s. Oh, it isn't that. It's not for my father. It's for the whole galaxy. What is it? Earth is going to revolt. <laughs> no. All of it? Oh, don't laugh at me. Oh, the galaxy has a volume of several million cubic light years. It contains 200 million inhabited planets. Earth has a population of only 20 million. And no resources. What can Earth do? I don't know, Doctor, but my father does. He's told me that Earth knows a way by which it can wipe out all outside life and... Wait. Listen. Hmm? Someone coming. Park Patrol. Quick, kiss me. Hmm? Don't be stupid. Kiss me. They won't suspect anything. Oh, oh yes, of course. Paul. Uh, they've gone. It's all right. Now come with me. I'll take you to my father. <laughs> Dr. Averdon, this is a pleasure. I have read your articles in the journal. It is hard to get copies. Our neighbors don't care to trade with Earth. It's part of the nearly insoluble problem of anti-terrestrialism. No one seems to want a solution. Earthmen and outsiders alike? Oh, no, that is not true. There is a way of preserving our culture and living as equals in a larger society. But the zealots don't think so. The zealots? Yes. They rule Earth now. They are a small minority, but they have power. They have plans. They planned the revolt, Paula told me? Yes. I see. Well, why didn't you report this to the Imperial Garrison? The Society of Earth Ancients have guarded me too well. Besides, they had a hold on me. I am 62. You know the customs of Earth. The 60 years. They allowed me to live on. The price was silence about the weapon. You agreed to this? I wanted to live. What is this weapon? You are aware of Earth's peculiar environment, the radioactivity? Yes. Over the years, we Earthmen have built up certain immunities to radiation burns, for one. But it's a minute difference. I measured it experimentally. Oh, but, Doctor, human life is not the only form affected by radiation and mutation. There is microscopic life, bacteria, viruses. We have been searching out such a virus, one to which Earthmen have developed a high degree of immunity but not outsiders. You mean a particular disease? Yes, common fever. It is a mild children's disease here, like chickenpox or German measles. But to outsiders, it is radiation fever. Symptoms develop in two hours. Lips are so badly affected that the victim cannot talk, and in two days, he dies. They've isolated this virus? Tons of it in crystalline form. And they plan to let this loose in the galaxy? By means of guided missiles. Then, frightened refugees will carry the disease across space. 
billions will die. You're sure about this? You have proof? I worked on the project. We've got to get to the procurator. I can catch the evening train at... Who is it? I don't know. Open up. There should have been an alarm. We've got to get out. Is there a back Open in the... Open up No. Don't move. No. Hands in front of you. What's the meaning of this? I demand... Shut it. up! I'm a galactic citizen. You've got no right to detain me without legal authority. I am an Earth man, but I think you'll find I am all the authority needed at this moment, Dr. Avadan. I am Balkis, the High Minister of Earth. The High Minister? What are you doing? I always look after distinguished visitors, personally. Avadan does not know anything. I doubt that, Dr. Schecht. We will proceed now to the Hall of Correction. <gasps> you can't do this. When the procurator... The procurator will hear nothing until it is too late. The guided missiles will be fired tonight at 12. Guard, if they make a false move... Keep them covered, guard. Right. Hold on. Can you scream? What are you... There, coming down the street. Imperial patrol. Oh, it's no use. Do what I say. Scream. I... Go ahead. Ah! 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 Hold it. They're outsiders. You're right. That's the Imperial patrol. All right, Earthy. What's going on here? Good morning, Sergeant. Sir? Earthy? You don't understand. I'm Borkus, the Lord High Minister of Earth. Listen, Earthy, I don't care who you are. What's going on? Yes, sir. We, uh, we've arrested these people. What charge? Blasphemy. Hmm. All right, get moving. Thank you. Sergeant. What do you want, Earthy? I'm a galactic citizen. I demand the right... You? <laughs> <laughs> May we proceed, sir? <laughs> Listen, Sergeant. I have something more to say to you. What? This. <clears throat> Wait. No Earthy is going to get away with this. Get a squad car! But, Sergeant, I'm the Lord Minister of Earth. Uh, Tell him about it at the Imperial Barracks. Now move, all of you, before I give you a shot of the whip. I tell you, I'm a citizen of the Empire. Listen. I can prove it. You'll get into a lot of trouble if you don't believe me. I'll admit no earthy would dare spit in my face. It was the only way I could get to the garrison. I insist on seeing the officer of the day. I sent for him. You better have a good story. Attention! That is. Which one of you claims he's a citizen of the Empire? I am. Well, it's the one from the store. You, eh? The smart louse that broke my arm. Well, well, well. I've got to see the colonel, Lieutenant. Now, Dr. Rabadan, I could hardly do that unless it's important. It is important. It's life and death for the galaxy. Mm -hmm. Come here. Closer. Oh, it's too bad I've got to save you for the colonel. What? He'll see you at 5.30, his orders. You... You knew all along. Sure. Come on, earthy lover. I'm afraid you're in serious trouble, Dr. Avedon. The man you're accusing is the high minister for Earth. I know, but I have proof. Well? I can only speak to the procurator. You've got to contact him. There are channels, Dr. Avedon. We haven't time for channels. I have the details of the plot from Dr. Schecht. You've got to let me speak to the procurator. I've already advised him of your arrest. He's flying in. You had better be able to prove what you say. If you don't, we'll have to hand you back to the native authorities. And their courts are notoriously savage. <laughs> I've called you here with His Excellency, the High Minister for Earth. My Lord, this man is behind the whole plot. Is he? There's no time to lose. I've explained to you about the virus. They're shooting off the guided missiles at 12. You've got to take action. Well, Your Excellency, my Lord, if this man has any evidence... You admitted it this afternoon. Well, you have no witness to that. Ask Dr. Schecht. 
He worked on the virus. I wouldn't say that Check lied, my lord, but he is a criminal wanted for evading the 60, and some men will invent any story to avoid death. The deadline is midnight. You've got to bomb those temples where the launching sites are. Perhaps I can explain. According to my information, Dr. Avedon seems to have succumbed to a certain Earth girl, the daughter of the unfortunate Dr. Sheck. Is this true, Everdan? What has that got to do with it? There isn't any time. You've got Dr. to do... Dr. Everdan, are you in love with that girl? Yes, yes. Will you listen to I me? don't think we need pursue this any further. Your Excellency, I shall order you released with an apology. No. Dr. Averdan, I can hardly believe a degenerate who fraternizes with earth women. You scum, you pot-bellied scum. I warn you, Everdan, you're in trouble enough. I'm in trouble. My you Lord. fool, you stupid, blind, bigoted fool. You're destroying the galaxy. You're murdering them all. But before I die, I'll have the pleasure of smashing your fat, oily face in the... Go! Ah, get the whip! Oh. Oh. Bell, are you all right? Paula. Oh. What time is it? One thirty. Past the deadline. It's all over. Lord Ennius released the High Minister with an apology. It doesn't matter. The Empire can wipe Earth out. It won't save any lives. The virus must have been spread here, too. Earthmen are immune, but outsiders... Bell, you're an outsider. Yes. Oh. I am. We're paying, Paula. The rest of us. Paying for centuries of intolerance. Oh, Bell. Look out there. Through the bars. The night sky. Pinpoints of light. The Empire. Doomed. <laughs> oh, Bell. Bell, don't. I was just thinking. I came to Earth to prove a theory that man started here. That once in prehistoric times, Earth was the only populated world of the galaxy. It's funny. Now it will be that way again. Man living only on Earth. He'll forget the science, the machinery of the Empire. He'll forget the stars. And there will be only Earth. Alone in the universe. A pebble in the sky. The children of tomorrow will play with toys. But what will those toys be like? An ordinary clerk in an ordinary job finds a terrifying answer to that question next week as Dimension X brings you Child's Play. Dimension X is transcribed each week by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of the magazine Astounding Science Fiction. Today, Dimension X has presented Pebble in the Sky, Dramatized for radio by Ernest Canoy. Featured in the cast were Santos Ortega as Aberdon and Susan Douglas as Polar. Your host was Norman Rose. Music by Bert Berman. Dimension X is produced by William Welch and directed by Edward King. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.